Oh, that's nice. Hello folks, I'm Seamus from Outdoors Inspiration. This is my German Shepherd, Petra. <laughs> she always joins me. Um, today I'm going to have a chat about the R number. So just to make sure I've brushed up, I watched Prime Minister's questions today in Parliament. Come on in, Petra. Oh, Petra, come here. Hello, Seamus. Not the R number. What are you on about R value? Ah, okay. Sleeping mats. All right, okay. Yeah, sorry, I thought we were gonna get all political for a second then. <laughs> well, that's a relief. <laughs> okay, thanks, Chiro, bye-bye. Ah, right, okay, a communications error there. It's not actually the R number we're gonna talk about, but the R value. That's thermal resistance of your sleeping pads and mats. That sounds a lot better to me. And to be more precise, I don't just want to talk about the R value. In fact, I'm going to say very little about the R value. But what we can look at are the type and range of sleeping pads and mats that I like to use. I'm no expert in this stuff. If you want to know the science behind how the uh, R value works, and I'll talk about it in brief, um, then I'm sure that there are channels out there, and I would recommend looking at the Thermarest site for a start, uh, who go into that in some detail uh, and can explain it far better than I can. And as per usual, I'm not really going to do reviews on these. I'll tell you what my views and opinions on my use of these particular pads and mats are. But you may have different views and different feelings. So let's start with closed cell foam mats. I stopped using closed cell foam mats a long time ago. Now I use them for many, many years and they do have their value. And I know that there will be people out there watching this who will say, well, there's nothing wrong with them, Seamus. There isn't anything wrong with them. I don't use them. <laughs> There is a difference, um, but they have a limited R value. That is to say they have limited thermal uh, resistance and limited comfort for me. And they take up more space than some of the other mats that I use. So they're more bulky, don't have the same thermal insulating properties as the mats that I use, but they are or can be lighter. Typically with a closed cell foam mat, a good one, you may end up with a, uh, a thermal insulation R value of about two, uh, which is for summer use. Uh, now, I know that there will be people out there that use closed cell foam mattresses uh, all year round and they'll swear by them in the snow, etc, etc. Good on you. <laughs> but they're not for me. Now, somewhere where we did use uh, closed cell foam mats quite a lot was in the Antarctic. Not in isolation and not on their own. So what we used them for was an insulating layer between the floor, the glacier, and our lilo. And I mean a lilo. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the way that our sleep system worked back then was that we would have a, a, a CCF mat on the floor and that would insulate a thick rubberized lilo and it, we're talking about the type of thing the blue thing with the blue on one side red on the other with big bungs in it so the idea of the ccf mat there was to try and insulate the air in the lilo from the floor and on top of that we would then lay a full length sheepskin and on top of that we would then have an expedition bag and those bags were extremely heavyweight down bags, no zips or anything like that on them because that just leaves somebody an opportunity to leave themselves unzipped. And we would have a thick pile liner, and by thick pile, I mean like buffalo style liner to go inside that bag. And an outer bag that covered the whole lot um, to ensure that your sleeping bag was protected from cooking and eating and daily chores. So bearing in mind that some of the field parties may be out for you know a month or longer, six weeks, um, and even winter trips were sort of 10 days, you needed to have a reasonably comfortable night's sleep. So why is the R value of importance to us? Well, it's key really to having a warm night's sleep. We can lose a lot of our heat through the ground and the R value tells us how insulating effectively our sleep system is against the ground. Since 2020, the R value has been consistently measured against the standard, the ASTM standard, and that's measuring against a controlled set of parameters. 
In a controlled temperature environment, a mat is placed on top of a sensor. It has heat radiated through it, and the amount of radiated heat that can be felt on the sensor underneath is an indication of how much it's allowing your body temperature to go through that mat. If a product doesn't have an R number, ask the manufacturer, ask the retailer. So an R number of less than two is usually an indication that a mat is suitable for summer use. Somewhere over two, into three, and possibly into the low four, we're looking at autumn and spring use. And five, we're looking at four season use, and six is for extremely cold weather. Those are what those indications and values mean. Now, there will be variance in those bands, that's why I'm being very vague about it, and it's going to depend on you, how you like to sleep, whether you're a hot sleeper, warm sleeper, cold sleeper, and the other components of your sleep system as well. So both of these mats are made by Thermarest. They are self-inflating mats, but I tend to help them up with a bit of breath. Now, people always used to say, don't blow them up because it affects them, etc., etc. It's just gotta be the, the, natural, uh, the natural air pressure that inflates them. I've never managed to get them to inflate by natural air pressure. And if you look on the Thermarest website, they say that no harm can be done by inflating any of their mats. So I'm gonna go with Thermarest, they make the thing. So I always top them up with a little bit of air. The shorter of the two mats is a ProLite 3 Shorty. So that's about three quarters length. And the longer of the two is a ProLite 4 full length. Now the difference in this is that one is thicker than the other and one is longer than the other. And I've got to be honest, for Dartmoor winter and even in the Lake District, I've got away on a number of trips. We're just taking the ProLite 3 Shorty down to about minus three. It's probably not what it's rated for. However, I always used to supplement it with some radiator backing. Radiator backing is polystyrene lined with foil. It's very thin, about two or three mil, and I just roll up uh, a few feet of it around my tent poles, and I'd supplement it underneath this, and it would help keep my body heat in for the night. And you might well ask, well, what about the other end, Seamus? What are you gonna lie your feet on and your legs? They're gonna get cold. Well, that's what I do with my rucksack. So the main part of me that I want to keep warm, the torso, is covered by the mat, supplemented with some radiator foil backing for winter underneath, and my legs would lie on top of the rucksack. It actually is surprisingly comfortable, and I've had some really good night sleeps like that. But then as you get a little bit older, you think, well, I can't be doing with that kind of fuss, so you move into a, uh, a full-length mat. These ProLites, by the way, are now the ProLite and the ProLite Plus, not the three and the four. These are quite old, as am I. <laughs> now, there are many manufacturers of self-inflating mats. There's loads out there to choose from. OEX will make them. You can get them in Go Outdoors. You get them from mountain equipment. Lots and lots of people. The main drawback with some of them will be the bulk and the weight. But if you're happy to carry it, that's absolutely fine, isn't it? Uh, at the end of the day, it's a personal choice. And it's a personal choice as to how comfortable you want to be or what you can get away with sleeping on, isn't it? One really useful piece of information is the fact that the R value of your pads is cumulative. So by placing one on top of the other, let's say, for example, that this is an R value of two and this is an R value of three, we now have an R value of five. Well, that's great because we can have one pad for summer, one for winter, and both for extremely cold temperatures. Then about 10 or 11 years ago, I discovered the luxury of the Exped down mat. Down mats are a great innovation because as part of their thermal insulating properties, instead of having all that foam uh, inside, they're actually filled with down. So when they are inflated, the down creates additional thermal insulation between you and the ground. This is an old model and it's the down mat 7 pump. And one of the drawbacks is that this weighs about 900 grams. So it's not far off, is it? A kilogram. The other drawback was that the pump system in this which is underneath here, consists of pumping your hands up and down over these chambers while sealing off this valve simultaneously. Although I've managed to make that work, I've never found it particularly effective. Consequently, I've always just blown air into these because I've been too lazy to get a pump sack for one. Um, now that can have a detrimental effect on the down inside the mat because the moisture in your breath 
can affect the insulating properties of the down by sticking together the fibres of the feathers. But it got to that point one day when I just thought, I've got to get this mat up. I, <laughs> I need it inflated. So I blew into it and I've done it ever since. I've had two in 10 or 11 years and one did blow a chamber. Um, so the weld went and it, then this whole thing starts prolapsing and bubbling up. Uh, but um, although I've seen online people reporting that that's happened, I've got to be honest and say that this mat has lasted very, very well and it has been extremely robust, very comfortable and very, very warm. So there I was on holiday camping in the Black Mountains with my son and uh, I was using a down mat. He was using a down mat and mine prolapsed. Uh, <laughs> so the weld went. So I had to get something new to sleep on. And it was summertime. So I got my first Thermarest Neo Air. And this is probably the cheapest of the models. It's the Neo Air Venture. And I've got to be honest and say, I slept the rest of that holiday on this and it was really comfy. One issue with it is that it sounds like a, a bit of a crisp packet as you move in the night. But actually, it's quite comfortable. Um, I don't think it's got a particularly high R value in terms of thermal insulation. Um, but there we go. It was summertime. I think it's probably about 2.4. But couple this with another mat, say a closed cell foam mat, a good quality one. Then we're going to get some really good winter performance out of that. So if you've got one that's 2.4 and another one that's 2.4, well, you're nearly at five there, aren't you? And that's a really good high value. Um, so it's not all about spending money on the uh, on the most expensive mat. Sometimes you can couple bits of kit together to make a really good sleep system. Now I mentioned pump sacks, which are devices for pumping up some of these mats. They're fairly simple devices. They're like stuffed sacks with a valve on the end and that valve clips onto your sleeping mat. You then seal the end of the bag while it's full of air and you squeeze it down and it'll fill your bag up. However, um, being lazy again, Thermarest do this great little device called the NeoAir Micro Pump. Very, very simple. I've been using one on the same battery for, for ages now. There's an inflation side and a deflation side. Obviously one for blowing the mat up and one for sucking air out of the mat. I've never had to use the deflation because this is intended to, oops, <laughs> this is intended to work only with the wing lock valve system, which is a modern system on Thermarest mats. This won't work on any other mat. There are other pumps available for other mats, not this one. Uh, however, when you unlock the wing lock system, air just gushes out of the mat when you want to let it down. It's absolutely beautiful. So I've never felt the necessity to deflate with a pump. Now I've mentioned the wing lock system and the modern Thermarest mats. So let's have a look at a couple of them. So these are Thermarest NeoAir Extherm mats. They're wonderfully comfortable to sleep on and have an R value of 6.9. Now that doesn't mean to say they're going to radiate heat. I've heard people say, oh, they're too warm for me. Well, I don't feel too warm in my bed at night. I want as much thermal insulation between me and the ground as possible. And this does that for me. Now these both are slightly different. This is the X-Therm, the standard X-Therm, and as you can see, it has rounded corners on it. Top and bottom, and that's to cut down on weight. And being perfectly honest, this is more than enough for me. It's beautiful to sleep on. However, for a bit of extra luxury, I've got a wide X-Therm Max. So the Max means that it has square edges on it. It's not rounded like the standard mat. This particular one, is wide as well by an extra couple of inches. So the one on the right here is absolute luxury to sleep on, uh, but it does take up a bit more space and it does weigh a little bit more. In terms of weight, I can't remember the exact weights. I think this one is about the 500 and this one is about 600 grams, something like that. But they pack down very, very, very small. Now these two mats are so warm, they've got an R value of 6.9 because Thermarest incorporate materials with a reflective value within there to radiate your heat back up at you again. Um, so they don't allow an awful lot of heat to escape down through the floor. Um, but they are also supremely comfortable. And remember folks that this doesn't have to be expensive. Some of those Neo Air X terms, in fact, the wide one is probably about £210. The Neo Air Venture I got for about 50 quid. Uh, the Pro Lights, I think I bought those used secondhand for about 
30, 40 quid. So there's a whole range of products available to suit a whole range of budgets. And do remember that the thermal insulation value of your pads is cumulative. So you could have something for summer, you could have something for those colder months, and then you could combine the two for the extremely cold months. Now I'm not going to stop and calculate the cumulative value of all these pads together, but what I do know, one thing for sure, I'm going to have a very warm and comfortable night's sleep. So I hope this little exploration of my sleeping pads and mats has been useful in some way to somebody. What we will do is talk about sleeping bags to combine that with our sleep system on a later Thursday evening. Also on our Outdoors Inspiration, Outdoor Essentials sessions that I always record for a Thursday evening, we're going to cover cooking, we're going to cover water filtration, we're going to cover tents in a little bit more detail. There's lots of things. We're going to look at hard skills, we're going to look at navigation as the nights draw in and start to get dark. So stay tuned to the channel, look out for our regular wild camps, so that generally happens about once a week, and then I have Outdoors Inspiration, Outdoor Essentials on a Thursday. If you like what we're doing with the channel, please subscribe. There's a button down there somewhere. It just tells me I'm going in the right direction. If you like the videos, give us a thumbs up and a like. Don't hesitate to comment because I'll always come back and respond to comment. And additionally, I'm going to put a link in the description below for a giveaway that we're running on this channel at the moment. There's a very short video on that link and it'll tell you how to enter a free draw for a remote canister preheat tube stove to set you up for this winter. It's very simple, but you've got to be in it to win it. We ready then, Petra? Come on. Onwards and upwards. Good girl. <laughs>